My wheel back there has a horrible foot pedal. Like, it goes here, it doesn't go, it doesn't go, it goes a little bit, and then there's no speed in between these two points, and then it goes from zero to 100 real quick. It's actually why I named my, my wheel Drake. Somebody will get that. Hello you dirty potters, how are you today? Today we're going to talk about beginner's wheels and what I think that you should buy as a beginner. Chances are you clicked on this video because you're considering buying a wheel, but you don't really know what wheel you should buy, why you should buy them, which one has better attributes than the other in certain fields, and here I am to give you my advice on that purchase. Please keep in mind that these are only my opinions. My opinion is not the end all say all of what you should buy. So today we're gonna go through a talk about what I think you should buy for your very first wheel and why. But before we start, I have some options for you. Now if you came to this video just to get one straight answer, you literally just wanna see this video, you want my opinion right now, you wanna know what wheel you should buy based on what I think you should buy and my experience, click on this timestamp right here it'll take you directly to what I think you should buy. Because at the end of this video, I do give my honest to goodness opinion on what I would have bought as a beginner if I had the money to buy this type of wheel when I first started out in ceramic artwork. This timestamp is for people who don't have the patience to actually learn, they just want the answers. The timestamp below that timestamp is the timestamp for people who just want the analytics of the wheels and my opinion on the wheels that I have worked with myself. If you want to get straight to the meat of this video, if you honestly just want my opinions on what wheels you should buy, and why and why I think you should buy them, then click on that timestamp. Because before these two timestamps, I'm gonna have a little talk with you. And for those of you who have been with the channel for quite some time, I think you know me. I'm gonna give you the honest to goodness, real talk truth. I'm gonna keep it 100,000 island dressing with you before we actually go into you spending thousands of dollars on buying a new wheel that you most likely don't even need to buy. Okay, are we good? Are all the people who didn't learn patience in fifth grade gone now? Hi, good, you made it. I applaud you for having the patience of an adult instead of a six-year-old. Now before we get started, there's kind of some fluff that we need to go through before you actually buy your very first wheel. Because chances are you're either buying a used wheel and you want the specs on that wheel just in case it's in this video, or you're actually planning on buying a brand new thousand dollar wheel or something close to a thousand dollars. Now I know and I completely understand it's really exciting to want to jump right into ceramic artwork especially when you have the finances and time to actually support that type of hobby. I know you saw someone on YouTube or on Facebook do these giant magical pieces and these giant magical pots and you want to get to that level really quick because it's a sense of satisfaction that no one else can really take away from you. Trust and believe I understand that. Or you're one of those people who just want to make cups all day, not trim your bottoms and make a quick buck, which this surprise, it doesn't work that way. I'm mainly making this video because I received the question of what wheel should I buy or what equipment do I need to start my home studio almost every single day. I get it on my Facebook, I get it on my Instagram, I get it on YouTube, I get it almost on every one of my social media accounts that I'm usually active on on a daily basis. And I would love to tell you that the first thing you need is a wheel and the second thing is a kiln and you're all good to go, you can start making artwork and you can go to sleep and have wet dreams about ceramic artwork, but that's not true. There are three main things that you need to get your ceramic artwork career started and the first one is time. You need the time to practice your artwork, study your artwork, experiment with your artwork, and actually get good or find your style in the certain way that you want to find it, in the way that expresses you as a human being in your artwork. And yes, that does mean it'll be really hard if you have kids, and if you have a nine to five job of 40 hours a week, and you're probably gonna be up at 1 a.m. in the morning crafting things in your garage or wherever you decide to set your wheel up. Mind you, it can be done, it is possible. I had two jobs and I took three different classes at State College while finding time to still exercise and still stayed up days upon days just to do my artwork. The second thing that you're going to need is space. You are kidding yourself if you think you can buy a wheel without actually thinking about where it's going to go somewhere either in your house, your backyard, your garage, maybe even outside with a canopy over it, something like that. It would be the equivalent of trying to buy a brand new piece of furniture without thinking about where that furniture is going to go, except for you need to plug this furniture into an outlet. And unless you want to have a bunch of extension cords running throughout your house looking sloppy, you're going to need to figure out where you're going to put your wheel before you even consider buying a wheel. 
We're not even on the subject of kilns yet. Oh my god, you need space for those. And the third thing you're going to need is money. Regardless of whether you buy them brand new or used, most of your ceramic equipment on the low end is most likely going to cost you $1,000. And that's me being very, very generous. My old used hand-me-down kiln cost about $300. That wheel back there that's old and hand-me-down cost me about $400. And the extra equipment to actually start my ceramic career or start making glazes, buy the proper books, keep buying clay on a constant base, also cost me about another three to $400. And that was me having connections. That was me looking around on Craigslist, going to the ceramic affiliations that I know and actually asking them if anybody has an old used kiln or an old used wheel and having credit at my local ceramic store and them connecting me with other people as well. This is me really working the system. And I'm not talking about I went to a ceramic store a couple of times and they saw my face. I was going to the same ceramic store for about five to six years, over and over and over again, at least once a week, to the point where they knew my car and my license plate number. Those are the three main things that you need before you can even consider buying a wheel. If you don't have those three things and you're just gonna use your wheel once a week, don't even consider buying it. You're better off spending your money going to the local ceramic store where they already have a wheel and a kiln set up for you and most likely a bunch of glazes and equipment and just doing it there yourself until you have the money and space and time to properly put in the time for this artwork because you're gonna buy a bunch of equipment, you're gonna get either tired with it or you're gonna figure out that you don't have enough time to actually dedicate to this art and then it's just gonna sit there, which is wonderful because people like me come along and buy it from you for like one third of the price and we actually treat it well and have the time and space to use those things. So, so you know what I take back what I said before, go ahead and buy it. And so I guess the bottom line to those three points that I just named would be don't just buy thousands of dollars of ceramic art equipment because you want to try it out. And that leads to my second point. Do you have a place that you can go to and start to experiment and see if you really like ceramic artwork to see if this is something that's gonna stay with you for the rest of your life that you're gonna put the time and effort into? Or do you just wanna try ceramic artwork and you happen to have the money to buy a wheel right now? I get messages from people almost on a daily basis of people saying that they live in an area that doesn't have any type of ceramic anything. They don't have ceramic artwork, they don't have ceramic stores, it's very difficult for them to buy a wheel, they have to go to the bigceramicstore.com to buy their wheel and get it ported to them and I completely understand that. You most likely need a wheel, I completely get that. But if you live in the same area I live and there's like three ceramic shops in your area and they have wheels and kilns in the back and you just want your own wheel, do you really need a wheel? Because please keep in mind, you're not going to be making any ceramic artwork if you just bought a wheel and didn't buy the kiln. If you're buying the wheel to save up and put it to pair it with the kiln later on, then maybe you have a good shot. Buying a wheel without having a kiln is kind of like buying the wheels to a car without actually having the car and the engine itself and the thing that fires it up. Like yeah, you have the wheel, technically they spin, but you, what, are you gonna, what are you gonna pair it with? You're not gonna go anywhere. I told you guys I was gonna keep a 100,000 island with you and you didn't believe me. I would be extremely sad if you went out and bought a brand new Pacifica wheel or a Clay Boss wheel or a Speedball wheel and then it just sat there waiting for somebody to use it in your garage because you figured out that ceramic artwork is actually hard but you didn't try it out first so you didn't understand that before you bought a thousand dollar wheel. Oh man, I wish I had someone to tell me that I should have tried something out before I bought it. Yeah, now it's marriage all over again. You have something that you didn't want. You just thought it was a good idea at the time. And now it sits in the corner staring at you demanding food and you don't know what to do with it. Whew, too real for some people, Dante, too real. And the third and final piece of fluff that we're gonna go through before we actually get through to the meat of this entire video is do you need a brand new wheel or can you just buy yourself a nice used or even maybe a kick wheel? You see that wheel back there? That wheel back there is super, super old. It's a Creative Industries MP model and I don't think they make them anymore. The pedal is not very responsive to my foot movements. The wheel head is actually made of plastic. I'm pretty sure they don't make those out of plastic anymore because plastic ones seem to warp over time and get little bumps inside the wheel head. The thing that holds the splash pan in place is awful even though I don't use a splash pan. That's one of the reasons I don't use it specifically on that wheel is because number one, I like to work clean and number two, it doesn't catch everything. This splash pan for this one just lets it fall on the actual table of the wheel. I'm actually lucky that thing still runs. But by all accounts, that is a low class, low cost beginner wheel. But I am still able to make things of this size and this caliber of artwork 
on that wheel, even though that is technically considered not a good wheel. And if I can make stuff of this caliber on that old janky, nobody makes it anymore wheel, then you do not need a brand new high caliber specialty or even a standard wheel that's above beginner wheels to make this all day long. Granted, I have had a lot more time and practice than most beginners, but that being said, I don't think the caliber of your wheel is gonna make such a difference that you actually need to buy a brand new wheel. It's not like you're gonna be throwing Grecian M4 of bases with giant trophy handles on them versus when you buy a lower class wheel and you're just throwing this. It doesn't really matter what wheel you have as long as you understand how to work with your equipment. And as far as I'm concerned, it's a very poor craftsman who blames their wheel or their equipment for the quality of their artwork. If you know how to work with your equipment, then you probably are making high quality or good stuff to begin with. Don't think that buying yourself a better wheel is gonna make you some of this artwork right here. This does not come from having a good wheel. This comes from time, experience, and learning how to work with your equipment regardless of how good it is. Because may I remind you, that's technically a crappy wheel back there. And I still makes the bazooka. I should probably put this down. I'm probably making some of you extremely nervous. Okay, we're done. I promise. No more of me lecturing you. We're gonna get into the actual meat of the conversation now. Before you start buying your very first wheel, there's a couple things you're gonna wanna take into account. And as far as I'm concerned, there's three main categories of what a wheel can and can't do as far as beginner, intermediate, and advanced stages. In my mind, there are three different types of wheels. There's beginner wheels, there's intermediate or regular standard wheels, and then there are specialty wheels. Watching this video, you're most likely never going to actually need a specialty wheel, and the highest you'll need to upgrade to is a standard wheel, because standard wheels, believe it or not, are actually pretty dang sturdy. Specialty wheels are more for people who've already figured out their artwork, need a certain speed, they can calibrate it themselves. Heck, they can even special order specialty wheels. But today we're just gonna be looking at some of the beginner wheels that I've worked on. But even in a beginner wheel, there's a couple of things that I personally look for in my wheel. And keep in mind, like I said earlier in the video, my wheel is technically a beginner wheel, and I still make giant pieces like this on it. So you can pretty much make almost anything you want as long as you have a good sturdy wheel. The first thing that I look for whenever I'm buying a wheel is how reactive the pedal is and how fast the speed can go up. It's kind of like a car. If you have to push pedal to the metal for that thing to even go 60 or 70, there's something wrong there. But I really want that car to be reactive towards my physical foot. Even if I give it a little bit of gas, I still want some reaction out of it. Some wheels speed up extremely fast with almost no warning. They go very slow, you keep pushing, you keep pushing, nothing happens, you keep pushing, nothing happens, and all of a sudden you get to the kind of this tipping point of 60 degrees where it just flies off the handle. Imagine if you were driving a car like that. You probably wouldn't like that, and it would probably cause a few accidents as well. The second thing that I look for whenever I'm buying a wheel is how much clay and pressure it can take from my body alone. If you have the good graces to buy a used wheel, which is kind of what I recommend for a beginner, then ask whoever you're buying it from to put as much clay as you can handle at one time on a wheel. For me, it's about 25 to 30 pounds of clay. Center that bad boy up, and if you don't hear any sounds when you're centering and putting a lot of pressure on it, or if you don't feel any resistance from the wheel itself or the wheel doesn't start to slow down, you have a pretty good wheel there. But if you're centering 25 pounds of clay on the wheel and you start to hear it and make all kinds of noises, then you have something to kind of worry about. Either the wheel is too old or it needs a little bit of maintenance. Extra points if you just spin the wheel without centering any clay on it and you start to hear little jiggles in there. Them's the ball bearings and them need to be changed. And the third thing that I look for whenever I'm buying a wheel is how easy it is to take care of it. There are some wheels that have wonderful splash pans if you use a splash pan that is. And there are some wheels that have wonderful splash pans and the splash pan is extremely difficult to take off. I hate these wheels. The splash pan is made of very thin plastic. The splash pan is difficult to take off. I can't clean it correctly because I'm a clean thrower. I don't throw with a splash pan most of the time. I usually just clean as I go and I clean my wheel each and every time after I use it. This is something that you're gonna have to get into the habit of doing because this is your wheel now. It's kind of like buying your own car and you're gonna have to take care of it. So don't be surprised one day when it starts making weird noises and you've never cleaned your wheel. So whenever I look to buy a new wheel, I always look and see how easy it is to take care of it. The old studio that I went to, Alpha, had a bunch of wheels that had the wheel head attached to the actual stand of the wheel itself. It didn't have a splash pan, the splash pan was the wheel itself. It just had this giant trench. And each and every time I used it, I would have to jimmy the wheel head off because most wheel heads do come off for easy replacement and I would have to clean around it. It didn't have a splash pan. The wheel itself was the splash pan. 
I didn't have an option to work clean unless I wanted to clean out that trench each and every time. And that is not something I would recommend for a beginner. As a beginner, you most likely don't know how to clean up or take care of your wheel in an efficient manner. And because of that, that would be considered a standard wheel. I wouldn't suggest that to you. Most beginner wheels come with a very nice, easy to take off splash pan. Because most people in the intermediate phase with standard wheels most likely understand how to keep their equipment clean. They take care of what they work with because they're craftsmen. They understand the necessity of cleaning their equipment after they're done using it. These three things are the main things that I concentrate on whenever I'm buying a new or even a new to me wheel. So with that being said, let's start off with what I can find on the internet on BigCeramicStore.com. Let's start off with the Shimpo LV Lite. I have personally worked with this wheel before and I consider it the lowest tier of beginner wheels. Even when you look at the stats of the LV Lite, it seems to say that it can only center 25 pounds of clay at a time. And I find that to be very true. I tried to center 28 pounds of clay on this thing one time and it started to really pull back on me. It did not like that it could not handle that amount of stress on the wheel. Most beginner wheels, much like this one, have about a half a horsepower. And I tell you what, half a horsepower do go fast. But go fast does not mean take pressure. Does wheel go fast? Yeah, wheel go fast. Does wheel take pressure? Wheel no take pressure. And that's something that you have to keep in mind. Just because the stats say it has a higher than normal horsepower, or at least a horsepower higher than the other wheel that you might be considering buying, doesn't automatically mean that it can take more pressure from you as a person or center more clay on the wheel head. It really just means it goes faster. The rotations per minute range on this thing is zero to a 250. That means that it can go around and around 250 times about every minute. As I said before, das will go fast. Most wheel heads that you're gonna come in contact with are either made of steel, aluminum alloy, or plastic like mine back there. I wouldn't suggest getting a plastic wheel because they're kind of prone to warping over time. That being said, mine has a tiny warp in it and it doesn't really seem to impede my artwork at all. And I can always just jimmy the wheel head off and change the wheel head later on. You can buy replacements for your wheel heads. And the Shimpo LV Lite is actually extremely light. It's only about maybe 80 pounds, I think I think if I look up the stats, it's probably like 82 or 85 pounds. No, no, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna look it up. Which, believe it or not, is actually extremely light for a wheel. A person of my size can easily pick up and transport this thing. If it's very well in my car, I can transport it very easily. Heck, I don't even have to put the seats down. This thing just fits in the back seat of my car. And I know for a fact, if my giant wheel fits inside of my compact car, the Shimpo LV Lite is most likely gonna be easy transport style. Let's go over the positives of this wheel. This wheel is extremely light. It's very easy to transport. It has a half horsepower. It is reversible, so if you're left-handed versus right-handed, you can always just change the rotation of the wheel. The wheel head is aluminum. I would prefer it to be steel, but I'm kinda happy it's not plastic like my wheel back there. So I'm gonna count this as a positive. And it does have a removable splash pan, and that's a big plus for me. As a beginner, I need to know that I can keep my wheel clean and respect my workplace. And this makes that job extremely easy. The negatives of this wheel. This wheel can only handle 25 pounds, but as I said earlier in the video, if you're just making little cups like this, even when you get into your intermediate phases, you're most likely not gonna be going over three to five pounds at a time. The splash pan is extremely annoying to take off. I know earlier I said for beginners, splash pans are a good thing, but me, working with this wheel personally, the splash pan is made of this weird, flexible, almost cheap plastic, and I hate it. I hate it a lot. It's difficult to take off, I've cut my hands on it before, it's just something that I don't enjoy. Even my old wheel back there is a simple twist and lift. As for the Shimpo LV Lite has an interlocking splash pan, which means you have to push one part away from the other one, jimmy it off, go to the other side and do the same thing on the other side. You might be able to get used to it, but it is annoying at first. The next one on the list is the Speedball Clay Boss. I would actually prefer having this wheel as a beginner over the Shimpo LV only because it feels a lot more sturdy and it can handle a lot more clay. I like to have a wheel that I can kind of bond with and grow with and the Shimpo LV Lite is gonna stop me at like 25 pounds. It's gonna be a little bit of a trouble to make something like this even though it is completely possible, especially if you're a beginner and you throw kind of thick to begin with. But the Speedball Clay Boss can center like 80 to 100 pounds. I've worked on one of these things before and they're really, really sturdy. Not only that, 
the pedal really reacts to your foot. I also hate wheel pedals that are overly sensitive, and this thing is neither one of those two things. It's not undersensitive, it's not oversensitive, it's just in the middle. I like it a lot, actually. The thing that I'm really noting here is when I look at the BigCeramicStore.com and I look at the Shimpo, it's marked around $700. Of course, we're going to apply tax with that, but the Speedball Clay Boss is $800. You're paying for almost $100 extra dollars for a much sturdier wheel that can handle a lot more clay. This is a wheel that if you ever decide to transfer from beginner and you get into that intermediate phase, you can most likely keep this wheel as an intermediate wheel. It's a good wheel. The thing that I like about this wheel the most is that it's made of steel. Some other wheels are not made of at least partially steel, but this thing, not only can you adjust the height on it, the feet are made of steel and so is the wheel head. Those are two things that are giant pluses for me. As I said before, I'd much rather have a steel frame and wheel head than I would aluminum alloy or plastic. It's not like it'll ruin your throwing experience, but it does add a little bit of care and sturdiness to your wheel. The fact that this thing is mostly steel adds a giant plus for me. The one thing that I really notice about the Clay Boss is that it's much much sturdier. If you ever have the option to work on a Shimpo versus this wheel, you'll notice although one's a little heavier, it feels much better. Let's break down the positives of this wheel. Has a steel wheel head, and the frame is a little bit steel as well. Nice. Can handle much more clay, which means if you ever decide to just upgrade or do a little bit more clay or want to experiment with larger forms, you can definitely do that with much less of a problem. It's extremely sturdy. I know this isn't a functional thing, it's more of a feel and preference thing for me, but this thing feels heavier and is much more sturdy than the previously named wheel. I actually can't find the stats on this wheel as far as how much it weighs. The wheel head is a little bit bigger, and when I mean a little bit, I mean two inches. Hey man, sometimes two inches matter. The Speedball Clay Boss is about 14 inches large, which means if you're making plates, it's much easier for you to make 14 inch plates on the wheel head and keep it there, rather than making this giant flange that extends the plate. You can very easily make a 14 inch one, extend the flange, even make it 16 inches if you have a two inch flange. I know as far as a wheel goes, the extra two inches really isn't that big of a deal, but it's nice to have a bigger wheel head, especially a sturdy one like that Speedball Clay Boss. And it's about $100 more, but you're getting a much stronger wheel. And those are all positives for me. If I want to, I can keep this wheel past my beginner phase. And that's why I would recommend this wheel over the previous wheel. This wheel also comes with pinholes. Almost all wheels that you're gonna see nowadays are gonna come with pinholes so that you can put pins and a bat to apply to the actual wheel head. This is an extremely normal thing nowadays, but if you ever see a wheel without those pinholes, it's a massive negative. That means that you can't throw big pieces on a bat and simply take it off of the wheel head. If you ever see a wheel head without pinholes, you're either gonna have to drill them in yourself and get it modified by somebody else, or you're gonna have to put clay on there, put a bat on there, hope it sticks, and then throw it that way. And that's a nuisance. I would much rather just have those pinholes. The Speedball Clay Boss, as before, does come with pinholes as well. Most of the wheels that you see nowadays are going to come with those pinholes. The negatives of the Speedball Clay Boss. I hate the splash pan. I hate it. I can't stand it. This is a personal thing just for me, but the splash pan is shaped like a giant smiley face with a cutoff at the top, and it's not round like a normal, real splash pan. This is a very personal thing for me. Mind you, it's made of much better plastic or whatever material it's made out of, but it still is just weird that it's a weird shape. It is heavy. It's a little bit heavier. If you're looking for something that you can just tote around all day, it might fit in the back of your car for easy transport, but it's gonna be a little bit heavier. I'm used to transporting my wheel by myself in my car, and if you're that kind of person who just takes care of your own stuff, likes to transport your own stuff, you wanna move it around the house, and you're maybe sick, or you just don't have that physical ability anymore to just carry things that are like 100 pounds around the house, then you might wanna go for a lighter wheel. This wheel also features a one-half horsepower motor. Just like the previous wheel, it goes just as fast, it doesn't go any faster, but it can take a lot more damage as far as the resistance it can take for the wheel head. This might be a negative to some people because some people like to go really fast when they center. I don't do that personally, but some people like fast wheels and for some people this is a negative. Her Prodigy wheel. This is one of the first wheels that I ever worked on and I really wish that I would have kept this wheel throughout my entire throwing career. It says that it can center 75 pounds of clay. I can safely tell you that I have centered a little bit over 80 pounds of clay on this thing. Did the wheel like it? No. It seems to center a little bit less than the Speedball Clay Boss, but as a beginner, I don't think you're gonna need to go anywhere above, I wanna say, 20 to 25 pounds of clay at a time on a wheel. So I wouldn't really worry about that as a beginner. Although it does go a little bit slower than the other two wheels, it seems to be a lot more continuous. It seems to have a much steadier rhythm. 
As far as the wheel head goes, the wheel head's made of aluminum instead of steel, and that's a little bit of a negative to me. It doesn't really matter that much, but the feet on the Progeny are much sturdier than most other wheels. My wheel back there is tapered down with this plastic, and it goes to a fine steel little tiny point. That's not very sturdy. If I decide to tip that thing over, I get excited, it's gonna knock right over. But the Stuart Progeny wheel here doesn't have that problem. It has these big old sausage feet that just kind of clunk down. And while it's a little bit heavier than the other wheels that I named, it still doesn't move, and I like that a lot. If I'm making something that's 14 inches tall, I want to know that some dog or cat or some kid's not going to come by, bump my wheel, and throw it off when I'm slow drying it and spinning it very, very slowly. I've only worked on this wheel a couple of times, but as far as I'm concerned, this wheel seems a little bit more sturdier in the base than it is on the top, but I like that. I like that once I put it somewhere, it's not gonna move. Of course, it comes with back pin holes like most beginner pottery wheels will. We wheels will. Will wheels? Wheel, 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 wheel smith. The thing that I like about this wheel is that the foot pedal is extremely sturdy. With the Shimpo, that thing just took off. It just flew if I went anywhere past half of the foot pedal. But this thing slowly acclimates to the speed and your foot. You keep going down and it reacts very, very well. Let's look at the positives of this wheel. This thing is sturdy. It does not give out. Even though it says that it centers a little bit less clay than the Speedball Clay Boss, I don't think most beginners are gonna go this high anyway. You do have to remember, if every single bag is 25 pounds, that means that this thing centers like three bags and a little bit more of clay at a time. And most beginners aren't gonna need to use that. Although, I do like to know that this thing can handle the pressure that my body can put on it. The more pressure that a wheel can take from the human body, the less strain you're gonna put on the wheel and the motor and the wheel head itself, which means that it's gonna last a little bit longer. The splash pan is not that weird interchangeable interlocking thing that I hate so much that cuts my fingers half the time. The other couple splash pans that I named off have this weird locking mechanism on them like I named before. You have to take them off, you have to separate them, you take them to the sink, you clean them. But this thing here forces you to take the wheel head off each and every time you have to clean it. That's a positive for me, but that's only because I have upper body strength and I can jimmy the wheel off very easily. You jimmy the wheel head off, you take the splash pan off, it's one continuous circle, you get a sponge, you clean the entire thing out and you put it back on. And, unlike my wheel, it doesn't drip down to the actual base of the stand of the wheel itself. Mine has a little hole inside the splash pan. It's not because of me, my splash pan is built that way. So if I ever do decide to work with the splash pan on, it's gonna mess up the entire table of my wheel. As for this thing, catches everything inside this neat little donut that's around your wheel. Unless you bring clay outside of that splash pan, your tabletop is almost never going to get dirty and it minimizes the cleanup. This is a massive positive for me. This saves about half the time of me cleaning up. And instead of little clay bits flying everywhere and me getting half of my wall dirty that I put my wheel next to, now I don't really have to worry about that. Let's look at the negatives of this wheel. Even though I sung high praises about the splash pan, you are still going to have to jimmy off the wheel head to get the splash pan off and clean it yourself. If you're someone who's unlike me and it's very difficult to do physical things around the house, or you just don't feel good that day, whatever might be the issue, you're still gonna have to take the wheel head off in order to take the splash pan off in order to clean the entire thing. Yes, the tabletop might be clean, but as far as the wheel goes, you're gonna have to take it off at least once a week to clean it. Because what usually happens with those wheel heads is that clay gets stuck underneath the attachment in between the wheel head. The wheel head sits on this kind of spindle looking thing that actually spins it around. And if you don't clean this inside of the spindle thing, then the clay gets stuck in there and you won't be able to take the wheel head off ever. I've seen wheel heads that are just stuck with clay. You need to be cleaning your wheel head. But if you don't want to jimmy off the wheel each and every time and you don't have the physical strength to do that, well, this is gonna be kind of a problem for you. As I said before, yes, it's easier cleanup, and I like this wheel head a lot, especially with the splash pan, but I like it because it's easier cleanup for somebody of my physical stature. This negative is a technical negative because technically speaking, according to its stats, it can't handle as much workability or pressure as much as the Speedball Clay Boss can. But I would argue that this is a positive as well because as a beginner, you're most likely never gonna go up to this amount of clay unless you're a true expert making those giant pots inside of Chinese restaurants that are like five people tall. But because the Progeny can usually handle a little bit more pressure, it lasts a lot longer. So while it can't handle as much clay, and that's technically a negative, it's also in my book kind of a positive. The last negative thing is that it only has one third horsepower as opposed to half horsepower 
according to the stats on the bigceramicstore.com. This essentially means that it doesn't go as fast as, as fast. The other two might go way faster, but this wheel seems to have a little bit more give to it. I don't really care how fast a wheel goes because once I'm throwing stuff that's over 12 inches, I need to be slowing down my wheel to keep that center of balance. And the final technical negative to this is that it's gonna cost you about a G. The other two wheels were about seven to $800, and for good reason. It's a much sturdier wheel. It's most likely gonna last you a little bit longer and you're basically getting what you pay for. This is a much more reliable wheel. Even though it's a little bit slower, it can handle a lot more clay. But if you're looking for just a cheaper option to try out a wheel, why not save that extra $200 for clay and other materials if you're just going to try ceramics out? Who tries out ceramics for like almost a G? Like who? And the final wheel we're going to go over in the listing is the Brent IE and the Brent IEX. They're very similar, so we're just gonna do them both at the same time. For some strange reason, I don't know why, I literally have no idea why, the Brent is the strongest out of all four of these wheels. The Brent IE and the Brent IEX are monsters. It goes from zero to 240 rotations per minute, which means it doesn't go as fast as the 260, but to be honest with you, that is nothing in comparison to the fact that it can handle much more pressure on the wheel head. I once went to a studio where there were nothing but Brent and the owner proudly boasted that he's been working on them himself from day one since he bought them and they are fantastic all the wheels except for one in the entire row of 24 wheels was the only one that was replaced and it's because it was defective but whenever I go into other places usually they have some type of like hosh posh of a bunch of different wheels because they've either replaced them over time or they just bought a bunch of different types but this guy was very proud the fact that he bought them in bulk and he's been taking care of them for almost five to 10 years. He was extremely proud of his Brents. Buying a Brent is kind of like buying a Honda versus a Mustang. Yeah, you, you got a Mustang V8. Yes, it goes faster, but it's most likely not as reliable. It's mostly found on road daily. As for the Brent gets you from point A to point B, it works great. It's just as powerful as you need it to be and it'll stick with you for a fairly long time. But Dante, I take care of my Mustang. Look, I'm not trying to argue that Brent is the best wheel in the world, okay? But I'm just trying to make the comparison of a high-end vehicle versus a very standard vehicle, right? The Brent over here will stick with you for a much longer time. Their customer service is fantastic. I've called them before and asked them questions. And usually you can find very easily interchangeable parts with the Brent. As for when you get a specialty wheel, yeah, it's a lot faster, but they require a lot more maintenance and it's a specialty wheel. It's gonna have parts that are gonna need to be specialty, a little bit more costly, and a little bit more difficult to get your hands on. Besides, you're a beginner. And if you're watching this video and you are a beginner, you ever get into the intermediate phase, trust and believe this Brent IE or IEX will carry you on into the intermediate section whenever you decide to put a little bit more practice and effort and pressure onto your wheel head. As for the specialty wheels or the Mustang as it were, you might have a great time riding that thing, but it's probably not gonna last as long. And to be honest with you, you just got your license. Why are you buying a VA Mustang? If you're just learning how to throw, you need a nice, reliable, sturdy wheel. You do not need the biggest and best and fastest thing on the market. It's not gonna make you a better thrower nor a better driver to go back to the Mustang comparison. You just need something to get you from point A to point B and to really hone your skills. Let's look at the positives of this wheel. I know I keep naming it, but the splash pan. The splash pan is fantastic here. Unlike the Stuart Progeny wheel, you don't have to jimmy off the wheel and then take the splash pan off. And it's not made of that annoying plastic that the Shimpo LV Lite is made out of with the free splash pan that comes with it. It does have that interlocking thing, but the splash pan doesn't have that really weird plastic that makes you take it off and might cut your hands. This has really nice, really sturdy plastic. I don't know what it's made out of, but it feels really good and I've almost never had a problem with it. It is just as sturdy as the Progeny wheel. It also has those giant sausage stands that I had named before, unlike my wheel back there like I named earlier, which is basically standing on a straw worth of pressure. This thing is sturdy and I like the fact that it's sturdy. I'm not sure what the wheel head's made out of. I can't find it in the specs. But trust and believe, it's a lot sturdier than the plastic one I have back there. If you're deciding to work on it, and you have dogs or cats or kids running around, it's gonna be a little bit harder to knock it over. And that's something that I kind of value, especially when there's a lot of people in the area. This thing can easily go to 100 pounds of clay. And as I said before, I don't really care 
how much you can throw on the wheel. I care how much the wheel can take as far as how much you can throw on it. If something says they can center 25 pounds of clay, that means that's the limit. That's pretty much the limit for the wheel. And if you go over that, the wheel's gonna wear and tear a lot faster. I personally always make sure I buy a wheel that can handle way more than I can center at one time. Because that intuitively means that it, of course it can handle more later on. Of course, as with most beginner wheels, it's going to come with pinholes for your bat pins for your bats. The thing that I really like about this wheel is that it's very continuous. If you make sure the pedal is at a certain space and you keep it there, it will continue to stay there amongst a large amount of pressure that you're putting on the wheel. As for with the other wheels I had named, at some point they're gonna start to kinda give out and the wheel's gonna start to kinda slow down. This thing is heavy duty industry sturdy. This, I really wish I had the money to buy this wheel. Which brings me to one of the negatives. This wheel is over a G. It's gonna cost you about $1,200. But, I would gladly spend that to know that this is a good, reliable Honda to go back to the car analogy. This is a very, very good, sturdy thing that's gonna keep with me, most likely for over years and years and years past what I need it to be. I'm not gonna lie to you, I am hard pressed to find negatives with this wheel. This wheel is a sturdy, nice wheel. The only thing I can really find wrong with this wheel is that number one, it costs a lot more money than the other wheels. The first wheel that we talked about in this whole list was the Shimpo VL Lite. And that thing was about 700 and something dollars according to the bigceramicstore.com. The Brent IE and the Brent IEX are gonna run you about 1100 to 1200 dollars. They're a little bit more expensive and if you're just trying out ceramic artwork, I would not buy this wheel. This wheel is not for you. This wheel is supposed to be a long lasting wheel that stays with you throughout your lifetime until you are forced to replace it due to some malfunction or the fact that you can't handle it anymore. This wheel is not to play with, this wheel is to keep. This wheel is not the person that you met at a bar and you're trying to take home as a sadness rebound. This wheel is the person that you're going to marry. And for some people who aren't looking for a long lasting thing and they just want to try something out, this is a negative. The splash pan and wheel head are a little bit harder to clean than the previously named wheel with the progeny. The progeny, you can just jimmy off the wheel head, take the entire complete circle to the sink, clean the whole thing out, and put it right back on. But this has an interlocking splash pan. You're gonna have to unlock it and relock it every time you wanna put it on and off. Yes, you can take off the wheel head, but it's still you still have to use the lock mechanism to take off the splash pan. And that's a little bit of a negative to me, but that's only because, again, I have the physical stature to jimmy off a wheel head each and every time, considering it's not stuck together by eons and eons of clay and nobody cleaning off their wheels. At the end of the day, what is my final choice? For all of the wheels, if I had the money at the time, knowing where I am right now and the fact that I continued doing ceramic artwork and it wasn't just a phase that I was trying out because I got bored one day, would be the Brent IE. The Brent IE X is a good wheel, but it's too powerful for a beginner. The Brent IE, however, is a really good wheel. Although it is expensive, it's around $1,100 to $1,200, it's gonna last me a really, really long time. As I said before with the car comparison, I don't want a Mustang. I don't want a specialty wheel that goes really, really fast and really hard for a short amount of time. I want a Honda. I want something that'll last me a very, very long time as long as I can take care of it. And the Brent IE has interchangeable parts that are very easy to fix over time. If I call them about a specialty wheel I got, they're gonna be like, all right, well, let us find the parts and then we'll get back to you. And then we'll get somebody with the experience to change out specialty parts. But with these regular beginner wheel Brents, they have the parts for them. They're easy to change out. They've worked on them before. It's quick and easy. It's not that hard. And that's something that I look for is easy access and easy to use. And my second real suggestion, if I'm being straight 100,000 island dressing with you, you do not need a new wheel. You see that wheel back there? That's an old hand-me-down wheel. And as I said before, it has a plastic wheel head, it has a very slow motor, it almost always gives out whenever I put over 20 pounds of clay on it, the foot pedal is not very reactive, and on all accounts, it's, it's all the things that I didn't agree with when I bought the wheel and didn't know what I was looking for in a new wheel. But now that I know how to work with it and I'm used to it, I can make this caliber of artwork with it. This thing is huge. This thing is half the size of my body. And I can still make this with it. And if I can make this 
with that very low quality, low caliber wheel over there, which by the way, has much lower standards and is much older than any other one of the wheels that I named on this list, you'll probably be fine making little cups and bowls like this. And I want you to go back to what I said earlier. It's a very poor crafter that blames the low quality of their work on the equipment. And if you can learn how to get a used wheel and work magic on a used wheel, just think about what you can do on a brand new, tuned specifically to you, hand chosen by you wheel. So for your very first wheel, if I'm being extremely honest, you need to buy yourself a kick wheel, you need to buy yourself a used old beat up wheel that barely works. Because going back to the car analogy, if you can learn how to drive really well with a beat up old car, just imagine what you can do in a new car. If you're just looking for a really quick and simple answer and you have a couple thousand dollars burning in your pocket, go buy you a Brent IE or go buy you a Brent IEX. This way, you can go ahead and pick up your wheel, do it for a couple months, figure out it's really hard, and then it'll sit in the corner for the rest of your life until some young buck like me comes along and actually buys it off you for one third the price. And we're very happy to take it off your hands. So if you came to this section of the video just looking for a straight out answer and you honestly just wanted a one wheel answer out of all my experience in my opinion, buy yourself a Brent IE or a Brent IEX. They last forever, they're good, they're sturdy, they're kind of like Hondas, they're not specialty but they'll get you from point A to point B and they last a fairly long time. Parts to them are numerous since almost every single studio has one and they're extremely comfortable to work with. They're very, very sturdy, there's almost nothing wrong with this wheel. And the one thing I can find wrong with this wheel is that it's too reliable. That's the thing that's wrong with the wheel. It's one of the best wheels you can buy, especially for a beginner, and it even carries over to the intermediate phases. And to be honest with you, I'm sure there are people out there who have the low end of the wheels that I seem to have a lot of negatives towards that love their wheels. I'm sure they've bonded with their wheels, as you should. You're a potter. Your first wheel should be a very special experience. And if you have a positive interaction with a wheel that I said I don't like on this channel, please put it in the comments below. I love to hear your feedback. But as far as my personal experience goes, I've worked with these wheels, and these are just the things that I don't like like about them. That was hard. That was a long video. That was a really, that was a really long video. I'm gonna go out quickly. Yeah. But I want a new wheel now! Okay, look, if you want a new wheel now, just go buy one. Stop the video. Don't even... It, Value my opinion. Just go buy the wheel. It's clear that you just wanted somebody to reconfirm what you were already going to do. Just go do it.